In 1973, the Charing Cross United Church celebrated their centennial service while Reverend J. Earl Burr was serving as the minister. Reverend Burr wrote this great book of history about the church titled Down Our Road. And in the foreword of this history, Reverend Burr wrote, this history has been written in order to preserve the record of the past. Serving in Charing Cross 50 years later now in the year 2023 seems Almost surreal at times, as, as so much has changed and as technology has advanced so much, instead of a written history of the church, I thought it would be appropriate to make a video history of the church. And I hope that this video, like Reverend Burr's book, Down Our Road, survives 50 or more years. And in this video, you will hear some history of the Charing Cross congregation. And that word, some, is really important because nothing can properly share the entire history of a church that has been located in its current location in the village of Charing Cross, Ontario for 150 years. Unfortunately, many of the ministers of the past have gone to their eternal home, and in some cases you will be hearing from the wife of a former minister, there's a student minister who was called to ministry from this church that is, you will hear from as well. Either way, I hope all the stories that are shared by previous staff and current staff members will help you understand a little bit more about the past of Charing Cross United Church. And I hope that through knowing this past, we will be able to guide ourselves into the future. And by the grace of God, I will be able to come back to this church in another 50 years at the age of 86 years old to celebrate what will be the 200th anniversary of Charing Cross United Church in the year 2073. First though, some history courtesy of Reverend Burr's historical record from 1973. Reverend Burr wrote that the first Methodist church to serve this area was known as Middle Road Church. The trustees in 1848 were George Harvey, Henry White, William White, Stephen White, William West, and Thomas Jenner. There are grave markers for these pioneers in the Charing Cross Cemetery which is one mile west of, the, of Charing Cross. The Middle Road, Ch Middle Road Church was a Methodist church about a mile west of what is now Charing Cross, where the cemetery is located. No building sits on that property anymore as a new brick church was opened in the village of Charing Cross in 1873, which marks the beginning of what is now Charing Cross United Church, where it sits today. The original brick building was very different, but sat on the same plot of land so the history of Charing Cross Methodist Church officially began. Reverend Burr wrote that while Charing Cross Church was being built, a strong wind blew two of the walls down before completion in 1873. It seems that some forces do not wish for there to be a church building in Charing Cross, as not long after the new church building was built in 1966. It was, it was not in service long before a fire struck and the people once again had to rebuild. So on February 21 of 1961, the Charing Cross United Church was, made the decision to build a new Christian education building, with the sod being turned over only four months later on June 18, 1961, by former minister, Reverend J.W. Button. It was a Christian education building that caught fire on April 1, 1967, specifically in the kitchen. It currently serves as the church fellowship hall, but these pioneers were pretty, pretty sharp. They used the Christian Education Home uh, building as their sanctuary while they raised the funds to build the current sanctuary. The current, the Christian Education building cost $60,000 to build and was repaired after the fire for a total of another $50,000. $50, Despite the fire, 
Ten years after the decision was made to build, build, the mortgage was paid in full and a service was held to burn the mortgage in the, in the church. Charing Cross United Church celebrates 150 years of ministry at its current location today, but ministry has been happening in this area dating back at least 175 years. Much has changed about, the, about life in the last 50 years, never mind the last 150. When Charing Cross built the Christian Education Building, farms were small and families were large. Now through to the year 2023, it is the opposite. Farms are large and families are small. The Methodist Church grew extensively in rural areas through the late 1940s, 50s, and 60s, in no small, in no small part due to the end of the World War II in 1945 and the baby boomer generation who continue to support, lead, and donate to the church. Now in the year 2022, many old Methodist churches that are now considered part of the United Church of Canada are experiencing troubles, partly because they built so many churches back in a day when the horse and buggy was the predominant method of travel. Now though, nearly everybody travels by the power of about 200 horses in gas-powered engines and, and even now starting to get into electric engines. So people can travel further and faster than any horse or two could manage. And these few factors of loan have changed society in tremendous ways and yet the church has survived these changes and in some cases has even thrived through those changes. According to the most recent church records, Charing Cross United Church serves 190 households and has a membership of 105 people. Though average attendance has seen about a 50% drop since the COVID-19 pandemic, hope is on the horizon with the possibility of new ministry partnerships in the future. What comes out of our current conversations that are happening? Only those watching this video 10, 20, 30 plus years into the future will actually know what happens as a result of what we are currently discussing. If nothing else, though, know that we all work together as a community to not only help each other and serve ourselves, but help and serve the community around us. This is Charing Cross United Church as it stands in the year 2023. A lot has changed in the last 150 years, and much will continue to change over the next 50 to 150 years, and hopefully even more. Nobody knows for sure what the future holds. But I know we trust in God and we believe that so long as Christ is at the center of everything we do, that the good news will continue to be shared with the community by those who call Charing Cross United Church their home faith community. From the Turkey Pie Project to auction dinners, from activities for the youth and the young at heart, a place to vote in elections and a place to find safety, security, and hopefully a smiling face. I hope that all these things continue to happen as the church community continues to reach out to the community around it that we may all work together to make Charing Cross a community filled with people who love and care for each other. And may the church help others see the love that God our Creator has for us. And I now turn this tribute over to hear from others who have served in this church in some capacity to share some memories and words for such a wonderful celebration calling a call on a telephone mm -hmm. and I say Reverend not Reverend so I hate to bother you but so and so and so and so I said don't hesitate to call me if you have a problem mm -hmm. so they uh, appreciated that I'm sure yeah you could tell how they reacted to it you know so you liked helping people. Hey? You liked to help people. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. I think that uh, it becomes an important part of your ministry mm -hmm. when you can help people mm. and people feel free to come to you. Mm. you yeah. See? Greetings to you at Charing Cross United Church on this Sunday as you celebrate your 150 year anniversary. I am a child of this congregation. I grew up here. The church was central in my growing up. It was just such an important part of my life, a second home. 
It was so central that I gave directions to people to find my home based on the fact that it was five houses past the church. I have vivid memories of Sunday school from my earliest years, probably about three years old, there was a class. I remember each year after we finished Sunday school in the spring, we had a graduation service where we went through the white gates. The beautiful white gates were decorated and opened and we passed through them as we sang, open the gates. This was a symbol of moving on to the next year of Sunday school. I remember some wonderful Sunday school teachers and you know who you are. And one day I myself became a Sunday school teacher at Charing Cross. I also remember those great Sunday school Christmas concerts where there was lots of rehearsal and anxiety leading up to it. And that evening after performance was always highlighted by Santa's arrival after we sang a rousing chorus of Jingle Bells. I have vivid and very sad memories of the church fire, the fire that burned the kitchen and the Sunday school rooms. I was very young, but it was a major blow. I remember wondering how this could ever happen to our church. I remember the great destruction that it did the sights and that terrible smell. I'm sure you remember it, that terrible smell of smoke and devastation that lasted for a long time. I also witnessed the courage and determination of so many church members to rise from the ashes. And I saw the hours and hours of volunteer labor that went into the rebuilding project. Rob and I were married in the sanctuary of this church. I preached my first sermon here as a newly minted minister on the Sunday after my commissioning in Sault Ste. Marie in 1979. This church family has played an important role in my life. I have always felt that I belonged in this church family. There was never any question about it. I was valued, encouraged, listened to. And that kind of support is no small thing for any child or youth. You will have heard the expression that it takes a village to raise a child. Well, in this case, it took a church family here at Charing Cross to raise this child. You are a big part of what led me to enter ministry and to continue to serve the church for 40 years before my retirement. As you celebrate this special anniversary, I want to share these stories and express gratitude for the commitment that you have made to children and youth ministry over the years. It is a great gift which you have given me and to lots of other children who grew up in this place. So I say happy anniversary, Charing Cross United Church, from one of your own. Hi, my name is Norma Stanhope. My husband Stan served here in Charing Cross and at Wesley from January 1984 until June 1987. That's 36 years ago. Now Charing Cross, you're celebrating your 150th anniversary. What a milestone. Congratulations. Stan and I have fond memories of our time with you. For instance, on New Year's Eve celebrations, we'd be there until almost midnight and finish with worship service. A great way to start the new year and a good way to say goodbye to friends who are all packed up, ready to head for their winter vacation in the South. And of course, there's your turkey pie project. What a feat of organization. People from the congregation, the community, friends and family, we all got together to make those turkey pies. We had fun and we had laughter, as well as a lot of work. Of course, you know all about that because today, Andrew tells me, I think he said was 
something like half a million turkey pies you've made? 16,000 in six weeks just this year. Absolutely amazing. And people did love those pies. We always felt that the spirit of Charing Cross showed through the activities that you did. You were dedicated to worship, to service, to fun and fellowship. May God continue to bless your ministry. Enjoy your anniversary. Good morning. My name is Cheryl Stedman. I am the other half of your former minister, and I'm sad to say deceased, Reverend David Stedman. One of the greatest accomplishments that Dave felt that happened while he was here serving with you was helping Martin Dawson become a minister. That was very high on Dave's. In the winters, Dave very much enjoyed the Bible studies that he spent with you and did with you. But working on the different fundraisers was a big thing for Dave. The turkey pies. It didn't take long in numbers to realize that there was no way anyone was going to be able to roll out all the pie dough that was required. So for luck, they managed to get a hold of a pizza sheeter to do the tops of the turkeys and then to do the bottoms, a press of which one of your people put according to hydraulics, which made it so much easier. And then when the health board decided to deem that no longer could the turkeys be cooked at the homes, God bless your local electrician who managed to bring in enough hydro that you could cook 30 odd turkeys at a time. In the springtime, the auction sale was a big, big get together for everybody. And one evening appeared on the stage in the back was a little lamb, which was auctioned. The family that bought it ended up raising sheep for a while. Then in the summertime, Dave challenged you with a pork barbecue. Wow. And his biggest challenge to you was to feed a thousand people. You learned a lot through that, but you also accomplished it. Congratulations. The greatest thing I think that Dave probably taught you was when he stated the words of something new that you did not say, we've never done that before. You learned that mighty quick, mighty quick. In all of the places that Dave served, he always talked that this was his favorite. Very much his favorite. And me also. Not that I was here all that much because I was busy in my own ministry, but yeah. You are our favorites. And thank you. God bless you, and as you continue, spread God's love. Amen. Well, good day and congratulations, Charing Cross United Church, on their 150th anniversary as a faith community in Charing Cross. Well, I was asked by Andrew to come up with a few memories. Uh, of course, I'm not a former minister of Charing Cross, but I am a former student student that was at Charing Cross and uh, just a, a regular uh, lay person as well. One of the things that I uh, can recall uh, is that while well, we used to square dance at Charing Cross United Church, we first started at uh, St. Luke's and we moved on from there because it got so big and well we moved to Charing Cross United Church and I can still remember having uh, New Year's Eve parties uh, with a square dance uh, on the 31st of December at Charing Cross United Church. 
Remember Frank Sheila used to be big in that particular group as well and help organize it. I think some of the things, other things that I remember uh, about Charing Cross uh, was just the great community uh, that we had uh, together at that particular time. Uh, my daughter has really, really fond memories. She thinks she has the ideal childhood growing up in Charing Cross. And so the people who helped me with my ministry other than all of, well, Charing Cross basically, like that whole turkey pot pie committee, I just, I, they were just great people. And, uh, uh, but I remember mostly the former ministers of Charing Cross United Church. They, they really assisted me. And the first minister I had when I moved there in 84 was Stan Stanhope. And he really helped me with a lot of spiritual guidance while I was there. And I became good friends with Stan. And Bob Duffy, when he came, uh, he was the one who encouraged me to become a lay preacher. And yes, I did that for years. And he let me preach uh, when he wasn't there. And that meant that Wesley and Charing Cross United Church were subjected to some of my early attempts at preaching. And God bless you, you were very polite, but I know I muffed up most of them but you still gave me lots of encouragement. The other uh, I remember is, uh, of course, Dave Stedman. And Dave Stedman was a very hard worker, and I appreciated his family there and his support all along the way as well. But I do wish you a success, and I have faith that despite everything, that uh, God is still looking after us, God is still looking after the church, and that God appreciates the fact that you've been together as a faithful community for 150 years. And so may God bless you and the ministry of Andrew as well as you start working towards 151. Well, thank you very much and amen. <music>
and when my mother died is something that I carry with me and remember because the people were so good and so kind and I appreciated every single one of you and all that you did to help me. So on this anniversary, I want to wish you all well. I want to wish you God's blessings and that this anniversary will be one of many, many more. Good luck. God bless. I am Pastor Andrew Gilliland. Now, by the time this video airs, officially Reverend Andrew Gilliland. I've served here in Charing Cross United Church since September 2016 until uh, the present, the day this video is out. So far, a total of nearly seven years. One thing that's really stood out to me about this community at large was the church and the community and how friendly and welcoming people were to me and my family when I came here with my son, Jasper. I was a brand new minister who had never served in a church in a full-time capacity before, and Charing Cross took a chance on this 30-year-old kid full of vim and vigor. Nearly seven years later, we have all grown and changed together quite a bit as, as a church, but also as people, and I hope that my ministry here has been uh, good and fruitious for all involved. One of my favorite memories that stands out to me when I was thinking about memories was one Sunday morning, I think it was my first year in ministry here, there was a bit of a snowstorm on the Saturday night and I was driving to the other point in the charge, Wesley United Church, just on the corner of 8th Line in Bloomfield, on these snow-covered roads, I was going to lead worship there. And on the way to Wesley, driving at about 15 kilometers an hour, much slower than the speed limit of, of 80 kilometers an hour on the road, uh, my car's tires lost grip, and my car did a 180 where my back end was where my front end should have been, and I crossed into the opposite lane of traffic and very slowly slid into this ditch on Bloomfield Road. I got out of my car unharmed and, and called the music director, Susan Baker. I did not know the area well yet at this point in time. I didn't know who lived where or who was who. And, and Susan drove down the road to pick me up and bring me to Wesley to lead worship. She also drove me to Charing Cross to lead worship again at Charing Cross later on that morning. We had some fun and laughs at, at, at both churches about the minister putting his car in the ditch on the way to church. And it was mentioned to me that my car was right by a farm that one of the members of the church lived in, Mike Fuzzy Jenner who happened to be at church that morning. And immediately after church, Fuzzy and I chatted about where the car was. I found out Alan English also lived nearby, and then Matt Smith drove me from the church to the ditched car location. And upon arriving, there's a couple of Chatham Kent's finest officers who had shown up while Alan was hooking up the car to Fuzzy's tractor with a chain. And they pulled the car up and out of the ditch and a quick chat with the police officers after the fact and they let me drive the car home because there wasn't any major damage. And this was a significant moment in memory for me as it really made me realize that these are people who are willing to help others when they are in trouble. They will get down and dirty in a cold, swampy, snowy, wet ditch to hook up a 1999 Honda Civic and pull it out before the owner of the vehicle, in this case the minister, even has a chance to arrive to help the process. It was a truly incredible experience to me about helping our neighbors and the golden rule of treating others the way that we want to be treated.